Hello guys, welcome to the Web Technology Lab. So this is assignment number three, where we have to implement servlet and JSP in assignment number two. So in assignment number two, we have done JavaScript validation on assignment number one. So first of all, we'll see what is servlet. Servlet is a Java program. It's a simple Java program which is used to create dynamic web pages. So in this diagram, you can see how servlet is working. So whenever a web browser is sending the request to the web server for any web page, it communicates web server communicates with the servlet and so after that servlet creates the web application creates the dynamic web page and that will be again given to the web server and then web server is uh, transferring that uh, web page as a response to the client the web browser now here we have to use again JSP so JSP stands for Java Java server pages so it is used to create dynamic pages web pages where the advantage is what we can use Java codes inside HTML tags. So that is the advantage of JSP where you can embed your Java code inside the HTML tags. Now, again, we are going to use session management in this assignment. So what is session management? It stores the session information for a particular user. So whenever any user sends the request, so whenever it sends the request, that time some, some information about this user or client will be stored on this web server and that will be accessed throughout the application to uh, validate that user so after that we'll, the, uh, we'll see uh, quickly the steps that we are going to follow here so first we will create a, a new dynamic web project in Eclipse after that we'll create JSP files that is register.jsp login.jsp and home.jsp then we will we are going to create servlet classes register login and logout and then we are going to create web.xml file in webinf directory and finally we are going to run the project on server so which server we have we have to use here so we can use a uh, tomcat server we can use a wildfly uh, server we can use a web sphere server so there are different web servers out available so just check out how to install the uh, tomcat web server on your uh, laptop just install first a uh, tomcat web server or any other server on your laptop and then start this project so without uh, any server application or web server you cannot uh, run this assignment remember this so now we will go for our project so see this is eclipse where i have already uh, uh, installed web sphere application server liberty so that i have already added in my uh, eclipse id here so how to add any server uh, in your eclipse uh, just see here at the bottom there is a server tab just click on right click here and click on server then go inside the list here you will get the different uh, list a uh, list of different server providers just search, uh, <coughs> search for suppose you want to install tomcat just search for tomcat select any version that is version 9.0 the recent latest version of tomcat select it and click on next here browse your directory like where wherever your directory is there so store first of all download the tomcat server uh, so uh, that uh, uh, source that you have to download from apache tomcat site then you have to search for the source like this you will have the tomcat directory and just okay just add that installation uh, directory here and click on then next button finish button so that way you can add your uh, Apache Tomcat server in Eclipse ID so that you can do yourself. So after that, what we have to keep, uh, do here, uh, you have to create a new project. So I'll create a dynamic web project. And here I will provide the name that is login application. Okay. Then here you can see that I have already uh, selected a target runtime that is WebSphere application server liberty. So this will this will uh, see when you when will you see this here when you install any or when you add your any web server in your Eclipse ID. That that time after that you will get your target runtime here. So what is the uh, what is the importance of target runtime? So target runtime is important why why because here you have to use servlet also. So servlet, we cannot use servlet uh, without the servlet API. So to add that servlet API, the, that JSP API uh, implicitly or automatically, we need a target runtime. So this will, this target runtime, that is this server, 
will provide you all the required libraries for servlet and gsp so that already selected here uh, if you don't have target runtime uh, it will show just none here but i have the target runtime i will choose with spare applications or liberty then i will click on next button then i will click on next button here i will check this generate web.xml deployment descriptor so when, uh, while deploying this project we need some uh, configurations we need some data so that will be taken from web.xml file that we have to store in web.xml file so uh, for that purpose we will generate here web.xml file so i will check it here and then click on finish so now my project has been created here so i will go in my project tree so in my project tree first of all i told you that you have to create gsp file so i'll go on web content directory and on web content directory i will right click and then i'll create first gsp file so here here i will provide the name of my gsp file that is register because this is my first required uh, gsp file so i'll create register.gsp here and i will click on finish button now it is it has created the gsp file here so the, this is the default code of your uh, gsp file this is auto auto generated code here this is similar to your html because just uh, i have told you that gsp just allows you to embed or use your java code inside the html code so here is the again html code so now we uh, will do uh, uh, i will copy and paste the uh, registration form code here so i have already uh, we have already done our uh, code in assignment number two so i'll copy and paste this code this whole code i will copy and i will paste in my this you can see i'll remove this this okay so here i have copy and paste my code so after that i told you that we have to create another file but, but before that some of the modification that we have to do in this code so here in form tag i'll replace this action with okay just i will leave it blank now and i will write here method i have to use here now we are going to communicate with the server so in order to, to communicate with the server we have to use uh, the http methods okay so here uh, there are two methods request methods http request method that is get and post so i'll use here post okay then in this code we have to change this thing that is i will remove this on click oh i will keep it here okay so this we need this registration form we need so now we know that we need here style.css file and uh, the the file that is validation.js so these two files i will add here so again i will right click on this my project and then i will go for go for here other file okay in other file i will search for css so here css file click on next and give the name that is style.css and then finish okay so this is my style.css file where i want to copy my code I'll go in my code assignment number two code where is my style.css i'll copy and paste it there okay so i'll copy and paste my code here now after that next file that i have to create that is javascript file so again i will write i will right click on just right click on your project then again go for here that is javascript source file then give the name to your javascript source file that is your javascript source file you will give the name that is validation dot js okay and then finish so again i will go back and i will copy my validation dot js code here 
so see this is my validation.js file where i will copy and paste code here okay so this way I, I copy and paste my code here no need to write a code again here because already we have done it in assignment number two so next after registration uh, register.jsp next file that you have to create well again right click on web content i will go for new file and then here i need jsp file so i'll again create new file that is login.jsp and then i will click on finish so here login.jsp file has been created so again i will go back to my brackets editor and i will copy and paste the code of login.html uh, login here okay. so this is my okay that i will copy and paste my eclipse id replace this with the this code okay now see we have created two files that is register.jsp and login.jsp the third file that we need to create that is home.jsp we'll go back here and right click and new and in new jsp and here give the name that is home.jsp so after login we need to show some data or some page that page will be my home.jsp finish okay so in this page i will do one thing i'll just replace with insert title here with a uh, home page okay so the remaining code that we want to do that i will do after uh, login and register servlet so right now we'll just keep it uh, as it is and now we'll go to create the servlet classes so again i will create a right i will go on java resources here i will right click on java resources because now we are going to create java code here so uh, we can store the java code in java resources here in our project tree so i will right click on java resources and here i will choose servlet the first servlet i have, I have to create that is servlet uh, that is register because i am going to uh, handle here registration sorry here i will right click i will go for servlet here i will write in class name in class name i will write servlet sorry uh, register so for registration i will create a, a register class here and i will finish click on finish button okay now this code has been generated here auto code uh, auto generated code so out of this code i will remove this part this part is not required I'll remove this part this part this part okay for this i will remove okay so remaining portion i will keep it as it is i will remove this to get call also okay so this is your a register dot java file so where we have created a register servlet so in this file what we have to do now we can see that uh, we are having a register dot jsv file so in this register dot jsv file we have taken all these parameters like a username password confirm password then gender email id first name last name then mobile number all this data we are accessing from the this register.jsv file so now in register.java file will access that data okay and will store that data on database so here we need mysql database so before this we'll go for mysql database so go to your terminal we first of all I install the mysql server you will get the instructions on internet how to install mysql server on your ubuntu operating system 
so i have uh, i have already installed mysql server on my system so how to launch mysql just type mysql dash q then i want to log in with the root user and then dash p so i log in with my root user it will ask for your root password okay so this is your yeah, my mysql console so in this mysql console first of all i have to create a database so i'll create i'll run the uh, uh, this query that is create database and i will give the name that is suppose i'll give the name registration okay so i will give the name register semicolon okay so the register database has been created here now i want to go inside register database so i will run the next query that is use and the database name register with semicolon so now database has been changed now i'm i'm go inside i have i'm inside the register database now inside this register database i have to create the table so i'll run the query create table and then create table i will provide the name that is student <coughs> then after that inside this inside the bracket i will provide the uh, table column name so my first column name will be username the second column name will be oh the first column is name is user uh, username where i will use data type varchar so i will use 100 size then second is password where again i will use back cap and 100 size then after that i'll use next sorry one minute so i'll create the table student then username var car 100 then password var car 100 then third field is my first name first name then var car 100 the next field is last name var car 100 next field is my gender so gender where care so i'll use here on the care 100 then after that the next field is my email that is where care Hundred. The next field is course. That is again. I will use here care because it is having only characters. Hundred. Then after that, I am having a mobile number field. So I'll use mobile, and I'll use just uh, here. I will use worker again. Okay. So this is my their table okay so student table which is having username password then first name last name gender email course and mobile number so this field i have created in my this columns i have created in my student table so this table has been created so if you see select star from student will not get any data here okay this is empty set okay so here we have to go uh, uh, we have to insert the data through our servlet code so so we'll return back okay so here i told you that servlet is used for dynamic web page creation so here in servlet servlet is working on two uh servlet is working on uh three uh, uh functions or methods you can say that is init service and destroy so but in service method so service method is going to call other methods like do post do kit do delete and do put 
so here we are going to use do post method because in our form in our registration form in login form we are going to use post method that is http request method is post method so here we will use do post method okay so this in this do post method it is having two parameters that is request and response it is working on two parameters it is taking request and it is giving response so that, that, that they are the part of http servlet interface so it throws servlet exception and io exception so inside this we'll do first task that is i'll write response dot i'll write here set contain type the so first thing you have to do here that is you have to set your content type so because your content type whenever you are going to uh, your server is going to send the response so my response type or content type is text but which type of text that is html so this first very important uh, function is here method is here that is set content type that you have to call with the help of response response object now after this the next method uh, class you have to use here that is print writer it's class you can use uh, create its reference here so i'll create the out reference is equal to i'll use response again dot here you have to call get writer method because you you have to write your content on the page here so what is the page you are going to create on that page you have to write the content so you can write that content with the help of get writer method you can call with the help of response object method and you have to store its reference into print writer object or reference so it is giving the error that is it is saying print writer cannot be resolved to a type so just hover it just put uh, go on this print writer uh, keyboard and just see what are the errors so it is giving the 19 fixes available so i'll take this first uh, fix that is import print writer so i'll import print writer class here okay so now my remo has my error has been gone now after this what you have to do that is you have to access the values of your registration form so now i will go inside register.gsp and i will see what are the names here so the first field is my username field which is having u name name then second field is having u pwd so uh, right now i will remove this confirm password because we need, need not to use confirm password here so i'll remove this confirm password okay now here the u name u pwd f name l name gender is having name gender then u email is having u email course is having u course then mobile number is having u m and o these are the names that we have used for that fields okay now we'll use that names here in register.java for accessing that that values here so here we'll write we'll use here one thing that we will use here that is we'll declare a variable okay first that is string so this string i want here so i want name here username so i will use u name is equal to request the help of request object i will call get parameter method here okay so we know that whenever we want to access the parameters of my registration form i have to use get parameter method here okay so inside this method in i have to pass the parameter that is my first field name that is u name in the same way i'll go for next okay so my next field is password i'll write here upwd is equal to request dot get parameter so the same i will write here upwd that is the name of my field there then after that third third field is first name so i'll write string f name is equal to request dot get parameter 
again and here i am having again f name the name of that field the same thing i will copy and paste here i'll copy and paste here so here i will just replace with l name and here l name. okay now the next field is gender so again i will write a string gender or i will write here you gend dot is equal to request dot get parameter and for this i'll write gender then after that next value is my email so i'll write you email is equal to request dot get parameter that is you email is again the name of that field there next is my course so string course is equal to request dot get parameter again i will write here view course that is the name of my field there then uh, same thing i will repeat here string for mobile number and write i'll write here you course okay so i'll write here u m o b two m o b this i will write here uh, this uh, variable i will use string variable then again get parameter and here i'll write u m and o so this is the name of my builder again we'll check whether it is correct or not so gender uml u course and um and o so these all the names that uh, the all the uh, field names that we have used here to access their values okay now after this what we want to do that is now we have access the values of my of the text fields all the input fields now we have to create a database connection before that i will declare a variable boolean variable i will set is as a flag is equal to false one flag variable i will declare and its value i will initialize uh, with the false so why this variable is required we will further okay after this you will understand why i have used this variable here okay it is used for uh, next purpose okay now so this is okay sorry so this is not required here so we'll go further and we'll go for database creation okay so here i'll write try i'll create a try and catch block catch exception ee E dot print extract trace so this try and catch block i have created here so in try try block i'll do the database connection first i will create the database connection so how to do the database connection just i'll tell you you have to write here class this is generic class name you have to use generic class name class and then for name this one name method you have to use and here you have to provide the driver your jdbc driver okay here you have to provide the mysql jdbc driver name so i'll provide here my driver name that is com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver but how it is possible okay how to connect with the jdbc or mysql uh, with the java just see you have to copy and paste okay you have to use your mysql connector okay, okay. so here i'll show the my mysql connector so this char file you have to uh, you have to use here so the char file you have to copy in lib directory so in my bynf there is a lib directory so that char file you have to use so this char file will copy 
we will paste in here in webinf and lib okay so i have i have inserted i have copied my mysql connector java file this file you can download from mysql site okay this is one of the jar file and that you have to copy and paste inside this way by under lib uh, under way by nf there is a lib directory inside this lib directory you have to paste it paste the file that is dot jar file because without this file you cannot do the database connection okay so now i can use this name because of this file i can do the connection here so i will provide the driver name that is com.mysql.jdbc.driver then after this I